Welcome to Rejoice in Sea with Ty and Betsy Tice. Our podcast during this Thanksgiving week is one that I believe will be very applicable for each and every one of you. It's trusting the Lord at the darkest times in your life. The scripture is Proverbs 3, 5 through 10. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. The word trust as a verb, an action or an activity means to have confidence, to place security, to confide with safety, to cling or hold fast, to take refuge or shelter. Trusting God in our darkest hours, God calls us in his word that we, God tells us in his word that we can trust him. Romans 8, 31 If God is for you, who can be against us? Romans 8, 37. Know in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. John 10, 27. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. 2 Peter 1. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them we may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. I just want to say at this point in time, don't we want to escape some of the evil that's going on today? Well, God tells us we can, and it's through his promise. 1 John 4, the one who is in you is greater than the one who's in the world. 1 John 5, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. I know right now many of you, your faith might be on the low side, especially with uh, Thanksgiving and with all the family disputes that happen during this time. Or maybe you don't even have family with you and you're feeling lonely and discouraged. My brothers and sister, faith has overcome. Trusting the Lord at our midnight hour, Matthew 25, the parable of the ten virgins is a perfect example of this. This represents God's timetable, different from ours. We are to be ready at all times and at all hours for the Lord's call. Are you ready? Are your lamps filled? Are you full of the Holy Ghost and power? Are you walking in his strength and his might? You can. Turn your eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face. In Acts 16, we read about Paul and Silas in jail. This represents God's presence and rescue in the darkest hour. The Lord comes through for us even in the darkest hour. He never sleeps or slumbers and is ready to work in our behalf. Consider this, really. 
Paul and Silas in jail. What are they doing? They're singing hymns and praising God. How on earth can you sing hymns and praise God when you're chained up against the wall, when you're in a dungeon filled with rats? But yet they're, they weren't there. In the spirit, they were in the presence of the Lord. In their darkest hour, they transcended that darkest hour to be in the presence of God. That's really all we have to do, loved ones. Transcend our own natural desires, our own natural beliefs, and say, Lord, here in your presence, this is where I'll stay. In Acts 20, Eutychus fell dead. This represents tragedy at the darkest hour. Even in times of our greatest hurts and pain, the Lord is always there and attentive to our cries. If you're not really knowledgeable who Eutychus was, Eutychus was the guy that was sitting up on the third balcony. I Obviously, it must have been on the ledge of the third balcony, and they were listening to Paul teach. Mind you, Paul had been teaching from early evening until midnight. And the man is still talking. You think your preacher's long-winded? Try sitting under Paul's teaching. Well, this man was so weary that slumber overtook him, and he literally fell out of the third balcony to his death. Paul gets up, stops his teaching for a moment, walks over to Eutychus, falls upon him, and says, he's not dead. And like a preacher today would probably say, in the name of Jesus, you're not dead. And he got up. The men lifted Eutychus up. He was fine. What did Paul do? The scripture tells us that he literally preached until 5 a.m. in the morning, five more hours. Now, there is a long-winded preacher. Revelation 1 when Christ comes on the scene, his presence is bright as the sun. Even though something may look like a midnight event, the Lord's presence will give illumination, direction, and comfort. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Isaiah 41, 10, 13, 10 through 13. Trust in the Lord always, so do not fear. For I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who rage war against you will be as nothing at all. For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not Fear, I will help you. Lord, today, as we close this podcast, let us not fear. For Lord, you've already taken care of our enemies. You've already admonished us to keep our eyes onto you, to hold your right hand and to not let go. Lord Jesus, that is our prayer today. Hold on to us as we hold on to you. Brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus, walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh.
Nothing.